What's going on, everybody? As you can see I have a new outfit here. I went ahead and traded out with Kate, gave her Agatha's dress so she could clean up a little bit. Rehab up here in the co-op and start feeling better about herself. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to see if my character could actually wear this, if it was something that she could get. And you can. I thought it, it looked pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty casual. We'll roll with it. It doesn't really have any, I guess, protective value. No real armor rating. I think it gives you plus one to your endurance, which is cool, but uh, nothing else. Anyway, it looks good, and that's what really matters. So we'll roll with this for a while until I find something I like better. I'm hoping Kate has a really cool backstory and some good character development. If not, that's fine. But I'm, I'm hoping that once you get past that gruff exterior that you find out there is a softer, more likable cape underneath. As opposed to the ragged out, hardcore dope fiend that she is right now and all that. Where the first thing you see is her, you know, jamming Psycho into her arm being like, Yeah! Give me some more of that, you know? Um, I'm hoping there's a lot more to her. I'm going to save her, if I can, for a future playthrough. Uh, like a lot of other things. Um, make her a, uh, a romance option in the future, maybe. Unless I find out there's just, I just can't stand her, you know. But, um, it would make it, uh, make it new again, you know. If you think about it, okay, but let's see, when you guys seen, oh, happy holidays, by the way. Uh, actually, I, I hope you had a good holiday. You won't be seeing this till probably well after New Year's. Is this a, a Lieutenant Gutsy? <laughs> awesome. Um, well, it looks like we got gunners here, which usually means good stuff. I noticed they're already shooting us with lasers. And grenades. Uh, get out of the way, get out of the way. But um, if you think about it, um, as as long as this Let's Play is probably going to play out, I, I don't know when we'll be done with this. I don't really have any kind of limit in mind. It's just do stuff, kind of see where the game takes us and experience it. Every playthrough is going to be different. Uh, and as far as trying to realistically cover every corner of the map and do every single thing, I, I'm not even going to try to claim to do that. We'll just experience it. We'll do, we'll just do a playthrough, you know, and uh, if we come up on quests and stuff, we'll go do them. We'll adventure. We'll go see new things and experience new stuff, hopefully in some different ways. Hopefully even when we talk to some of the same characters you guys have seen, maybe I'll make different choices so new funny stuff happens and stuff like that. You never know. It's just random. You know, it's just whatever. No two playthroughs are going to be like in a Bethesda game ever, you know. So, uh, but you got to figure by the time this is done, when I get back into this to do another playthrough, and I could say uninterrupted, where I can just spend 10, 12 hours, I don't have to stop and edit and upload and do all that, where I can just play for a, a day or two straight without sleeping if I want to type of thing, right? And just get lost and absorbed in the game. It's all going to be new again. If you wait a couple months and go back to a game, a lot of times it's fresh. Things that you enjoyed the first time, you'll have actually forgotten about. And so when you go back to experience them again, it's almost new again. Um, I've gone back to play... Plenty of games like that. Dragon Age 2, Origins, um, oh, uh, Skyrim even. You know, it's it's some years old now. When I go back to play that, some of that sense of wonder, and a lot of it's like the music and stuff, but it'll come in and it'll be like new. So with this, this is going to be months later. By the time I get back into this to do my next playthrough, which I'll probably play through this game many times. I don't know what the shelf life on this game is going to be for me, but uh, doing this Let's Play with you guys has definitely extended that. I know people who platinum this thing in the first couple days or the first week and then went on to say they were tired of the game before um, um, two weeks were up, you know? And it was like, wow, to wait seven years for a game, to wait that hardcore for seven years for a game and then just to have it almost like just spoiled that fast, that would suck. That would suck. And I'm not going to say it hasn't happened to me with games before where I just went in and just burned it up like really, really fast. You know, all day, all night, this and that, did everything twice, you know, in the first week. And then, you know, after having waited and been so hyped for it, it's done. You know, it's, it's you know, as much as I hate to admit it, especially with the better titles, sometimes the game's just old, you know, you've burned it up. You've, you've seen it, you've seen it all, been there and done that. And that, and that would just suck. I really feel bad for, for those guys. So, uh. I can kind of see why. You get all excited for so long when you finally get it. It's just like, give me all that, and you just eat it all at once. F face all covered with breadcrumbs and icing. You know, cake crumbs and icing, right? Type of thing. And, okay, where's more? That's it. <laughs> you ate it. Oh, man, well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't want that at all. But this is just the opposite. We're, we're going to... We're, we've already spent... Oh, man, by the time you're seeing this, 
Oh, I'm going to guess it's we're already in, into January, right? And so, uh, you know, because I'm trying to get ahead here, so I can spend some actual time on a playthrough where I can just completely get lost in the game and totally zone out and totally be gone with it. I mean, that's what these games are about for me, is to get immersed in the world and just get lost and just enjoy the experience of being someplace else for a while, you know? Call it an escape, call it whatever. I'm not even going to tile it or label it or whatever. I'm just going to say what it is. It's... It's amazing. It's why I game, you know? It's why I love RPGs. It's why I covered these games on this channel. It's why I probably limit the audience here so much by doing just this type of stuff because of how special it is as opposed to all the other genres of gaming. It's really unique. It really is. And look at you guys. Take a look around at, at the, the people who, uh, who come in here to uh, watch and hang out and all that stuff. Uh, you guys kind of say it all because you guys are awesome. So there you have it. Anyway. Now, what uh, what to do after this? You know, I'm really not looking ahead, honestly. But if I were to stop and think about it, um, I really have no idea. I don't see anything really on the horizon um, coming up. Mass Effect Andromeda comes to mind, but I think that's, oh, geez, at least a year away, at least, maybe longer. Oh, look at that shot. I'm telling you, she is a beast with that 44 with the scope. She's like Boone. She is like Boone, and I'm not mad about it because there's more enemies. There's more kills to go around here than there were in New Vegas. In New Vegas, you might have two enemies and Boone would steal uh, probably both of them from you <laughs> with his ridiculous ass headshots around three corners shooting his wanted bullets from 500 miles away. And Boone was, <laughs> Boone was ridiculous, right? Um, you know, if Piper wants to do that though, there's plenty of enemies to go around. She can get all the kills she wants. I'm totally cool with that. I think she's just awesome with that 44. Seriously. Uh, but anyway, um, you have that. You have Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls types games. Um, PvP is fun to do videos on that kind of stuff. Uh, there's certain elements of the game that are fun. Boss battles, it's more of a situational type thing as far as just doing a playthrough. Dark Souls, their story is so hidden and so vague. You know, Dark Souls will tell a whole story by giving a weapon a certain name, and that's it. And the description of the weapon is it's a large weapon with a crusted hilt. And that's it. And that's supposed to give you all the lore of the game. If you compare it to all the other little hints and things that are to be found in the game. and, and There's really no just straight out story. It's a totally different kind of RPG type of thing. Um, the action element is fun to make videos of, I guess. But as far as doing a playthrough, let's play type thing, other than just going through a series of bosses, I would imagine from a viewer perspective, that's pretty much all it is type of thing not taking away from the game but as far as like i say doing a series on it i don't know but that's those are the two titles i can think of coming up um so you have a final fantasy what seven remake i heard that was one of the better final fantasies um i've heard seven ten i think eleven um i liked 14 realm reborn i thought that was pretty cool um it was it was amazing fun to grind it was a lot of fun to play especially with friends you could get out there so much Stuff you could do, the economy system was just through the roof and all that. But um, as far as a let's play, the uh, story was so vast. The world was so vast and so just kind of vague. I, I don't know. Um, there's two kinds of immersion. There's one that immerses you in the story, and then there's another that immerses you in the grind of just being involved in the world. And that's more a solo thing, I think. I, don't, I didn't, wouldn't really know how to get that across in videos. You know, sit there mining a particular ore or a mineral for 12 hours straight and finding some way to enjoy that would be in, insane. To the, I mean, who would do a 12-hour video of just mining ore? <laughs> you know, but it might be the funnest thing in the world, you know, if you're getting that particular ore to build, to make something in your little crafting system in your MMO. It might be, it might be something you do all day, every day, but to do videos on that would just be, I don't know, honestly ridiculous. Look at this. The freeway overpass like spans the entire city. This is crazy. They have a whole map above ground. So they have replaced my beloved subways with above ground high rises and skyscrapers and catwalks and this type of stuff. Okay. I'm totally cool with this. I am totally cool with this. This is, this is, this is a worthy exchange here. You want to exchange one for another. Sure enough, this doesn't have the creepy 
atmospheric thing that the subways did in Fallout 3. What this has is a more majestic, you're getting a view of the skyline. You're up here and you're out in the open and you're free. You're just, you're just up here. And look at all these skyscrapers to explore. And then all the little communities and settlements and strongholds in between and stuff. Yeah, this is totally cool. And you don't even have to really be an RPG fan to enjoy this and appreciate it. This is just one huge shooting gallery that spans the entire skyline of a city, if you think about it. And to include some RPG elements too, definitely, uh, that makes this special. This is uh, definitely very cool. Man, I, I, man, I want... Okay, this is what I'm talking about. You catch me just on my own, just out here, okay? Where, you know, we... <laughs> You gotta have some kind of uh, some kind of discipline in, in in these videos, right? In trying to at least follow something resembling a story, or exploring for the sake of exploring is great. But seriously, on my own, oh man, that little ramp over there that you see on that next build, oh, I'm all over this. I'm going in every single door and just poke my nose and everything. And it might be the day after tomorrow before I get back to hey, where was I headed again? What was I about to go do? Just totally forget. Who didn't do that with Skyrim, too? I mean, same thing, right? Uh, I, I plan on going to Whiterun. Three days later, you're level 50. <laughs> you haven't even been to Whiterun yet. You know, that type of thing. Definitely that type of thing. Man, I totally uh, can't wait to get lost like that. Like I'm saying, it's because of you guys, too. This is this is all because of you guys. I got to give you credit for it. Is, um, I'm going to still get to experience that for the first time probably two months from now. So this game will be new to me well into 2016. This is just friggin' fabulous. Can't thank you guys enough for that. So there you go. Now can I find my way back down to the entrance to this, uh... Can I make this jump? What? I'm... <laughs> what, is it? what do they call that? Uh, par parkour? Is that, is that what they call it? I'm par parkouring across the Boston Commonwealth skyline. Awesome. Jumping rooftops. This is cool, man. All right. Um. All right. So we're gonna get we're gonna get back on track. We're gonna stay focused. We're gonna uh, try not to get distracted too much, and go check this place out. It's bad enough I'm supposed to go meeting Preston Garvin. We probably won't be there for a couple days, even though it's only like a block away. We still probably won't be there for a while. Take that. I'm not even gonna look to see who's in here. I'm, I'm, I know it's gunners, but it wouldn't really matter. If it was gunners outside, that means the guys, people inside can't be any better. This place is gonna be full of stuff. Oh man. I mean, what place isn't full of stuff, but uh, hospital's gonna have the good salvage. Lots of technical stuff, things to make turrets and things like that out of. Oh, I had a moment um, after I did the build video, which, let's see, by the time you see this, that will have been weeks ago, right? But um, I was thinking because I had made the build with role-playing aspect in mind, and then I thought about settlements. And I remembered some of the turrets and even generators and stuff require, um, like, the science perk and stuff like that, and gun nut and things to make them, you know, like heavy turrets and, what is it, missile launchers, I think, uh... I think that requires like gun nut three if I recall anyway so that would require an investment of a couple points which isn't a big deal but the cool thing about it is that build allowed for the unlocking of gun nut and put you I believe one special attribute point away from uh, the intelligence Got it. perk that allows you to unlock science and so it'd be an investment of another point or two which isn't that big of a deal in a game where you level anywhere from 50 to 200 times depending on how thorough you're going to be and stuff. Um, at some point, points are going to be, you know, skill points are going to become like just, you know, throwaways. Like, what am I going to put it in? I'm, I've got everything I need type thing. Most RPGs, you fall into that. Um, with this, there's a lot of cool stuff. Is once the um, the the must-have combat perks have been picked. There's still a lot of other side stuff which can add to your overall game experience. Lots of role-playing stuff. Think A lot of things in the Charisma Tree. They just packed all kinds of things into the Charisma Tree that have so much to do with stuff that you do or can do in the world if you choose to that it can really enhance your game experience. So I love that. Is they finally 
uh, gave Charisma some justice and put a bunch of stuff in there. It just makes the game fun. Um, I haven't even set up my trading with my settlements and stuff. You know, what do they call it? Community organizer, uh, whatever. There's there's a there's a name for the perks and stuff. But I haven't even gotten into a lot of that, and I've just been having fun building. And I've been like, man, I would like to have this and this and this and this. And some of them require perks and stuff that do that. Well, the cool thing is the build really allows for that. The build also allows for a lot of leeway in terms of using um, what I would call uh, intense training. Basically raising any of your special stats, which you can do anytime you level if you want to. Um, it allows for a lot of that too. Some points that you can save from not having to pick some of the gun nut and armorer. Uh, and weapon smithing perks and stuff to where those perks are available for you if you want to take advantage of the loot system in the game, right? You can save those points and spend them on every, other things Ooh. like raising a few special stats, um, sinking some points into, you know, trading, setting up markets, setting up uh, uh, caravans, and you know, this is cool stuff. Scanner's clear. Do as much as you want to do type of thing. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. You don't have to invest in any of that crap. You want to go around and just shoot stuff all day, every day, and that's all you want to do. I don't care about a build. I don't care about anything. Give me guns. Let me shoot them, and that's it. You can do that, too. It's totally cool, and everything in between. But, so, uh, yeah, anyway, that, that was a little moment. I was thinking, you know, with that build, I wanted to save points that you didn't have to spend in, like, gun nut and stuff like that. But to be honest, if you want to do a lot of your settlement building, there's some things that require like at least a point in the science perk and stuff like that and uh that's not totally out of reach that's just an investment of an extra point or two which by the time you're in you know your high teens or your 20s you should be able to afford that anyway once you've got your point into uh your points into lock picking your points into hacking your points into whatever gun you're using or gun type you're using maybe a point or two into toughness and what have you um then you should have a few points left over to raise a special stat or two. Plus, you have all your bobbleheads. If you know where all your bobbleheads are on your, you know, after your first playthrough or second playthrough, then you can go um, make a beeline towards those and grab those as soon as possible. And that's an extra um, special point uh, for all your attributes. So you've got that too. And so I was, I was, I was kind of happy with that. It sucks as you come up with a good build and then that one thing that you didn't factor in later in the game that you weren't thinking about. One thing, then it comes back to haunt you and you're like, you know, because with, with me, with a build, is good advice. If it's not solid advice based on every element of the game, at least at my disposal that I know about, then um, then it's bad. It's, you know, And if, if that's the case, then I just I just have to call for what it is. It's just bad. It's, it's bad advice. It's unknowledgeable. I, I don't believe in, uh, and I see a pattern of this too. I guess maybe it's always been like What's that on that? YouTube. I don't think so, but here lately, whatever the next hottest game is, especially RPGs coming out, before the game even hits the shelf, there's like 30 character build videos from somebody who hasn't even, who hasn't even put their hands on the controller in the game yet. They don't even have an early review copy. Nothing. They haven't even played it yet, and they've got like 10 build videos up with all these fancy ass titles and the stuff. And I, it's, I'm sure it's great to hustle views, but I'm like. There's, there can't be any good advice and there's no experience to draw from, you know? Okay, so you read in some review somewhere that stealth makes you sneaky, so you say my stealth ninja build is one where I put points and sneak. That's not a build. It's, I don't... Uh, man, that, I, that just seems like disrespecting you guys. That's kind of becoming a little bit of a pet peeve, I guess. Well, I guess I just need to get over it, but still, that's um, a little bit annoying. So anyway, with... Oh, my first Assaultron. I haven't fought one of these yet. Oh, shit. Um, what is what is it letting off right there? Is that radiation? What is it doing? Well, whatever it's doing, it's doing it on me. Get off me. Is that like a, a drill kind of melee type thing? Ouch. What well, mobility is awesome in this game. Oh, that's... Oh, sorry, Piper. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Got a little excited there. Yeah. God, I suck on that. Felt that, didn't you? Bitch. Oh, 
just got some health. Damn! These corporals are no joke. Notice Piper's not just she's not just spraying and praying with her. She's picking her shots. Man, that was that is the best gun for her, period. Can't tell me any different. That's yeah. That's that'll be the go-to right there. Alright. Other than the gunners just being here. Obviously, yes. probably for the medical supplies and stuff. I wonder if there's a story here. There's a minute, man. I guess he came to investigate the gunners and they locked him up and let him die, huh? I guess. Well, then I'm doing a world a favor by getting rid of this trash. Well, inventory is probably already a issue, as it usually is. But, um... Hmm. Thinking about which settlement I'm going to go back and do some building. Exactly what, what I probably need. The ones that need a lot of walls, obviously I'm looking for steel and wood and stuff. The ones that need a lot of defense, like turrets and things. Then I need to be looking for circuitry and all that stuff. I'm not going to throw away circuitry and stuff like that anyway, though, honestly. You know, they could have easily set the uh, the achievement or trophy for number of locks picked to like 500 and you could probably still easily get it before you get halfway through the game. There are a lot of doors and safes and stuff like that here. With an expanded world, yeah, they... I found no shortage of computers to hack and uh, locks to pick. I'm having no luck with this whatsoever. Nice. It's, yeah, it's just for the safe, too. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, so where exactly is this taking us? Aside from just getting a bunch of stuff, there's got to be some story to this place. magazines or I would think there have to be a magazine in, in this place somewhere, right? You would think. Maybe a bobble hen? I made a list of the special bobblehead locations. I don't know about the rest of them. Like, um, let's see, what have I even found so far? I think I found the one for medicine, and I think I found the one for science. I think I did. Um, explosives. I believe I found one for explosives. Either that one or big guns. One of the two. I found a couple. Um, let's see. I found the one for perception there in Concord, and I found the intelligence one in the Boston Public Library. I remember that. I think those are the only special ones I found. Uh. The other, I guess, five that I'm still missing. Um, I made a list of them for my build video, and I don't remember where a single one of them were at. <laughs> did not, uh, did not keep it to memory. I just went and looked it up for you guys real quick. Uh, just put your builds together, you know, if you needed a quick reference on where to find them. And then, uh, lo and behold, I'm not even using it myself. I have no idea, which is good. I, I'm keeping it fresh. Like I say, these are things I'm gonna find. I'm not going to go out of my way to go get something. As bad as I would like to have that extra point right now, especially in Charisma, to unlock that, that the trader perks and stuff, um, I'll wait till I find the bobblehead. Say two to that. I've got a lot of wasted points in this build. 
which is cool. Trial and error. I mean, I, I'd rather learn that way. I'd rather learn from failing like that way. The best lessons. Can't fail unless you try. Come on, man. It's got to be a telephone. That'll work. It's cool. I think there's a circuits in, in a telephone, I think. Another thing about these skyscrapers, with all the crying that I did about subways and stuff, is these are a bit like the subways here. Okay, sure enough, we're not underground, we're above ground, but still, we're inside, and most of these buildings are pretty, pretty creepy. They may not be like the one haunted building in Fallout 3, necessarily, the Dunwich building, but, uh, close. And there's a lot more of them, so, hey, you know. This is, uh, this is totally awesome, actually. There we go. I need to make some more bottle cap mines, too, when I stop and think about it. I've, I've got a few right now, but, uh, those are, those are as I remembered them. Bottle cap mines are just completely awesome. Best thing ever. Well, I guess that's the first baby type skeleton I've seen. Big head on that baby, though. What's up with that? <laughs> Not creepy at all. I can't believe there's no more enemies here. There'll be something up here. Something, something tells me I'm sticking my nose into a place that I'm going to have to come back to for a quest anyway. I honestly I I'm thinking I like that system. As much as I love to explore, I can't is that an elevator? That actually looks like an elevator that works. I guess it would bring me up here anyway. Probably just a shortcut. Okay, well I'm not gonna bypass stuff taking a shortcut, sorry. But um as much as I love to explore, I also get a certain anxiety when I feel like I haven't explored everything. What's this? Medical center north. I don't know, which way do I go? I gotta have that. Gotta have that. Um, it's just, well, I can keep going up, but then they've got this big ass tempting door here. See, it's stuff like this. See, this is, I, I don't mind stuff where you can kind of rely on the quest to send you to places to allow you to experience stuff. Because how could I keep track of where I've been and haven't been? And true enough, I don't expect to see everything on, on one run anyway. Gotta have something left for future playthroughs. Got to have some new place to explore or else it's just, you know. So, I get it. But uh, still, it bothers me when I think I've missed something. Got to be someone up here, right? Oh, this is kind of cool. This is Gunner Commander. Oh, okay. It's about time. This looks like a boss arena here too, doesn't it? What's up with the trees? Did they uh, cave in from the roof or something? Well, that didn't alert him. Apparently I can't shoot through the power armor station up there. You know what? I got a surprise for him. I love this throwing arc. I love that. Here. <laughs> Just suck on all those. <laughs> awesome. He didn't even have a chance to get in his power armor. Ah. Uh -huh. The thing about that is if he jumps in that power armor and I kill him, I can't have that power armor. I can strip some pieces off it, I think, but I can't I can't have the frame. Now I'm gonna go jump in that frame and take that back to the house. I don't know what settlement I'm gonna put it in. I've decided I'm gonna put a a set of power armor at every settlement. For just no reason. Eventually I'll have a power armor stand at each settlement, but I don't think I can make those yet. I think that's another thing where you need the uh, one of the trader perks. Just to make stuff like that. Power armor stations, uh, weapons benches, and stuff like that. They make it to where you have to have some of that stuff if you want to uh, experience certain role-playing elements of the game. And I, you know what? That is awesome. Once again, that's just another point they made in, in making 
a lot more of your stuff relevant. In my build video, I discovered that um, the strength and endurance stats, um, although they are, uh, I, I could say strength is particular, especially to a power armor specific user. If you're going to run around with a minigun and your fat man and power armor and just run and gun and go all Rambo all over the place and just be a friggin' walking Brotherhood of Steel nightmare or whatever, you know, type of thing, then definitely there are some points farther down the strength tree that are that are like for that specifically. But there's one or two perks that aside from that particular play style, if you're role playing as that particular type of character, would be pretty expensive an investment for for characters playing anything else. Um, so I'm not going to say strength is useless, but uh, seeing as they put unarmed and melee damage as the first two perks in the strength tree. There's almost no need to really invest in it at all. Need. I say need. I'm going to let me emphasize that. I mean, obviously, the perfect character is one where you have 10 in all special attributes and you've got every perk and you've got every bit of equipment. Okay, fine. You're talking about end game stuff. But I'm saying to start a character, you know, sacrifices have to be made. If you want one thing, you might not be able to put points in something else type of thing. And so I found that strength, aside from just that one particular play style, is, uh, not quite as relevant as some other stuff. And stuff that used to be completely useless is now actually really important, depending on how you want to play. Like, you know, if you don't plan on doing settlements, you don't plan on setting up traders, you don't plan on doing caravans and all that other stuff, if that's not even going to be part of your game, then a lot of charisma um, really won't matter and stuff. And maybe even some of the intelligence stuff, like, you know, science and things like that wouldn't, wouldn't really be so relevant. But if you're going to do any of that, which is a good percentage of the fun to be had in the game in my opinion i guess each to their own um all that stuff is really relevant i love how they did that all right so aside from this vertibird crashed through the roof here um there's really nothing going on here except for the gunners have basically made this a base they've got their paintings up on the walls and all this so apparently this was just a headquarters I wonder if you actually get a mission at some point later with one of the factions to actually deal with the gunners, like specifically. I don't remember if there was anything to specifically deal with Talon Company in Fallout 3, for example, but uh, I remembered you could go to their headquarters and they had, you could finally reach a guy that was basically their main commander, if I remember right. Um, they had some bases, but they had one main headquarter place. And it seemed like even after you did that, you'd still see him in the wasteland. They'd still bother you, but... Uh, they got a Brotherhood Scribe guy here, too. Interesting. So they got a Minuteman held captive and dead. Now they've got a, uh, a Brotherhood of Steel Scribe held captive and dead. Uh, tortured and killed or just imprisoned or or all, all the above, whatever. Um, to get maybe some information out of them or something. I've, I've already caught the gunners looking for stuff. Now, I know they're mercs for hire, but who are they working for? They're, they're, that's my question. That's my question. Who are they working for? And it's obviously not for the Brotherhood, and it's obviously not for the Minutemen. We would know that anyway. So, um... Hey, point the way. Take who are they dealing with? Who are they, uh... Who's, the, who's pulling their, uh... Who's pulling their strings? Who's got their leash? I guess that's my question. Let's see, I think that's about all she's going to carry. Even with my power armor, I'm already having to sacrifice stuff. But uh, that's cool. Whatever. Try to keep the good stuff. Man, this is a hospital high-rise for real. Okay, it looks like we got an elevator up here. Keep going up. This is awesome. I can't tell you how much I like this. I can honestly say I like this in the same way that I like the subways. Alright, well, RK 
Okay, so we'll we'll use that elevator in a second. I know you get wood from that board game. I need to keep that. Is this a MRI? MRI center, looks like. Oh, I'll take that. Technical document, nice. That's literally free money. It doesn't even weigh anything. You can collect a thousand of those. Damn, imagine if you had a thousand. Twenty-five thousand caps. Nice. Twenty-five thousand caps. I could totally go for that. Way past 199. Not a day. Alright, so what's the story here? Well, there's a holotape. Okay, had to be something. Wayne, I'm leaving this message with Marcy in case you come looking for me. Though I pray you don't. The military took over the hospital, and everything's gone to hell in the city. Things here, they're... It's bad, Wayne. People are dying every day, and most of the time all we can do is watch and try to make them comfortable. One of the other nurses told me she heard a radio signal that sounded like you and the boys. I don't know if it's true, if you're still out there, but we've got a way out, and I'm going to try to find you. We've got a way out, and then you have the crashed vertebrate through the ceiling so that's it the vertebrate was their flight out of here and it crashed into the ceiling and they never made it I'm not gonna say that's a big story for this place but uh I wonder it's sad alright well I don't know how much farther up we get to go Apparently we're going way up. <laughs> this is a really slow elevator. One or the other. sky listen to the wind that's badass I know it's just simple audio but it just it it makes the difference yep yep that looks like the vertebrate there that was probably gonna life flight them out of here I guess this is after the bombs fell but there was still some people alive in the city and it's probably just mass panic and can you imagine the terror and here, the, the nurses and doctors staying behind to just help who they can. Wow. Just kind of putting myself in the scenario. And that would just be horrific. I mean, like, really bad if you think about it. Anyone seen the movie Escape from New York? The original one? Uh, uh, Escape... What was the second one? Escape from... It was a travesty. But Escape from New York, at, at least at the time, was really, really cool. And when you first got in there, it was, uh, I think, the uh, the glider that Snake Plissken flies in lands on top of... It's the World Trade Center, I believe, right? Um, anyway, top of some big skyscraper. And, uh, and he has to take... He has to find a way to make the elevator work and go down to this dark, decrepit building that had just been... Not a whole lot different than this. In fact, even creepier than this, I would say. What do we got down there? I see somebody. You think I can get him from here? Watch that be an innocent person. Watch that be a friendly settlement. Well, as bad as this sounds, they're not going to know who did that. I got 55 XP for that? Damn. 
Oh, we see the uh, Brotherhood of Steel blimp out there. So we know where we're at. Okay, last time we rode one of these elevators, we got attacked by super mutants on the way down. What do we got here? We got a gunner. I wonder who that person I shot down there actually was. It, that might have been a, a real actual mistake. Watch, I've got the whole Brotherhood hostile on me now. <laughs> like, I'm, I've been kicked out of the order, and now I'm going to have to fight Brotherhood of Steel everywhere I go. Freaking vertebrates are going to come by shooting me with their gatlings and stuff. Oh, no. I can just see it. I, I can really honestly... Well, we just have to live with it. Made a bad choice on sniping that dude from the roof. He can't know who did it, though. Right? At least that's what I'm going to tell myself. Okay, it's time to drop some actual weight here. Damn it. Actually, if we were really smart, we would just fast travel back to uh, one of the settlements right now and just drop all this junk off and get back after it. But there's this door right here, and I just have to go in it. I just have to. Here, give me those. All right, that's where we came from, huh? We're still way up there. Look at this cool-ass skyline, man. All right, so where are we actually headed? We are headed, it looks like, on the other side of that first little inlet. On the other, that far side over there, it looks like. Um, I see, it looks like I see a flag flying or something. I don't know. Some kind of fort or something. Called it the castle, so whatever. Not too far away. We're getting there, sort of, in a general, random, vague kind of way. Okay, this doesn't look good. Can't be friendly. Still hidden. Who's this? I'm not even going to ask questions. Oh, gunner leaks. Oh, shit. All right. Maybe that wasn't smart. Come on. Shoot me through the stairs, bitch. She's tearing my ass up. Here, taste that. All right, you. Still got somebody. Oh, there we go. Sorry, Piper. That it? Nice. Oh, she's got all the sexy stuff, too. Automatic assault rifle. Probably worth some money. Probably weighs about 40 pounds, too. Alright, so... What sacrifice do we start making? Alright, well, that's good for now. I'm gonna have to drop something else, I'm sure. Let's see what else we got here. Really was kind of looking forward to a magazine of some sort. Doesn't really matter what. I haven't found a magazine, have I? Already found one? I just forgot already? I don't think so. I'll take those. Which <laughs> she stops for lunch. Fight's over. I really like Piper. I really she's just cool. Honest, she's straight up. She's down with whatever. She's a beast with her 44. Absolute. That's in better shape than I expected. Better shape than I expected, too. It's also heavier than I expected. Um, let's see. Well. Let's see. Sacrifices must be made, huh? Okay, what don't I need? I need everything. Of course I do. Um, let's see. I don't want to give up anything with steel or wood in it, honestly. Unless it's just really, really heavy. Two pieces of steel for three units of weight? That's not worth it. Okay. That's not worth its weight. You can get much more steel out of some tin cans. I think you get, like, what, four pieces of steel for a half... For... Two pieces of steel for a half unit of weight with a can, right? I think. Oh man, cooking oil is hard to pass up to. Good luck to them with Notice the radio's coming through, as long as the music's not playing. 
Not that the radios don't work, but when certain songs come on, um, you guys don't hear them. It doesn't come across in the recording. I can hear it when I, while I'm playing, but it does not come across to you guys through the recording, and I'm assuming it's because it's copyright protected, and I think that is friggin' amazing. So Bethesda would think to do that for us YouTube guys, knowing their videos are going to put up, because they know these videos do them a favor. I doubt there's really anybody that had a question whether they were going to buy Fallout 4 or not, right? Most Fallout 4 fans are Fallout 4 Fallout fans, period. But for those that were on the fence about it or wanted a little look at it before they actually went and spent their money, that's what these videos are good for. Can you imagine how high we are on this little short bridge right here? I would hate to think of what's under my rickety-ass feet here. Wow. But um, for anyone who was on the fence, then this would... uh either help sell or not sell the game to somebody. Somebody might see something in here and say, oh, I don't like that. That's garbage. I can't imagine that, but I guess it's possible. But for the most part, I think this would uh, help serve the developer. If the de developer is confident that they have a good game, then they are served best by YouTubers who put their product out there and say, this is how much fun you can have with this. People will want that. I mean, that's free advertising. How c there's, there's no bad publicity, <laughs> you know? So, uh, just saying. All right, well, if I did find a magazine, I guess I just totally just forgot about it. Wasn't paying attention or something. Well, at least we have it safe. But yeah, if you've got free advertising coming with the videos, it doesn't do you any good for all of your entire soundtrack and everything you do in your game to constantly get flagged and those videos be taken down and yes. YouTube channels getting in trouble and stuff like that for... You know, they're not stealing that stuff. I'm not playing it off as I wrote the I Want to Set the World on Fire song. I didn't write that. I mean, anything to, I, I love the song in the game. I don't have anything to do with that. I'm not trying to steal that. Nobody, nobody even thinks I'm trying to violate that copy or any of that stuff you know it just happens to be part of the soundtrack in the game and so i think protecting um the youtube video makers from that i think is just awesome i think that's that's just wow that says a lot for them whereas a lot of developers say well you can't have our stuff it's our stuff you don't have any rights to it keep your hands off of it oh you don't want all that free advertising okay buddy i won't have to name the developers that do that but uh Bethesda went completely the other direction, and that's just... If they weren't already just epic enough, that just makes them more epic, so... All right, well, I'm going to drop this junk off, leave my little suit of uh, power armor over here. Maybe one of the settlers might want to use it or something. I'm totally cool with that. I don't care. And then I'm going to put some walls up on this place. This hasn't been attacked like County Crossing was, but County Crossing has me gun shy now. Now every, every place gets built like a friggin' fort. They want defense, they're going to get defense. And so I'm going to make it my uh, goal in life to set up all of these like Fort Knox if I can. All right. And so uh, thanks for hanging out. That was a little bit of fun. And then we'll get back to it. We'll start heading towards Preston Garvey, I guess. See what there is to see along the way. All right. Y'all take care. Uh, if you want to subscribe, click that button up top if you haven't already. And if you want to catch the rest of this Let's Play, you can click that image in the middle. It should send you straight to the playlist. Y'all take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.